A blessed and pleasant good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to another edition of Morning Prayer brought to you by the Anglican Diocese of Belize. Today is the second day of the sixth month, and it's an overcast day here in Danguiga, slightly damp with just a small chill in an almost non-existent breeze. I hope you are having a beautiful morning where you are this morning. We're going to kick things off this 2nd of June with one entitled, Be Still, My Soul. Let's have a listen. One entitled there, Be Still My Soul. We're going to continue then with getting our words here up on screen for this morning. And let me see if I could make that happen in 3, 2, 1. I think something slightly went off there with our hymn, but we're going to trust that this is going to work this morning. Let's see if we have our hymn, our words up. And here we go. There we are. Excellent. Continuing with our opening sentence for today, June the 2nd in 2022. Mm -hmm. If you are following along in your books of common prayer, following our opening sentence, we will be using versicle 2 on page 35. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Words from Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 20. Hear us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. 
We will exalt you, O God, our Savior, and praise your name forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Amen. Our prayer of intent can be found on page 36. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your goodness, you, wait, let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. I apologize, my computer is giving me a little glitch here, but um, we're going to get through this. Our first canticle for this morning is the canticle De Venite, which is based on Psalm 95 verses 1 through to 8 and can be found on page 34. O come, let us sing out to the Lord. Let us shout in triumph to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving and cry out to him joyfully in psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth and the peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his and he made it. His hands molded dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he himself is our God. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. If only you would hear his voice today. For he comes, he comes to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. At this time we pause to call to mind those things that in thought, word or deed we may have committed. Things that might have been displeasing to Almighty God. Things that might have been unjust to our neighbors or things that might have been unfair, even to our very selves. For these times and these moments, Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. We make our confession saying, Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Up next, we have the reading of our psalm, and our psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 105, Part 1. And leading us in the reading of the psalm is Miss Aria Sylvester. Let's have a listen. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 105, Part 1. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing to him. Sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant. O children of Jacob, his chosen. He is the Lord our God. His judgments prevail in all the world. He has always been mindful of his covenant, the promise he made for a thousand generations, the covenant he made with Abraham, the oath that he swore to Isaac, which he established as statute for Jacob, an everlasting covenant for Israel, saying, To you will I give the land of Canaan, to be your allotted inheritance. When they were few in number, of little account and sojourners in the land wandering from nation to nation and from one kingdom to another 
He let no one oppress them and rebuked the kings for their sake, saying, Do not touch my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Then he called for a famine in the land and destroyed the supply of bread. He sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They bruised his feet in feeders. His neck they put in an iron collar. Until his prediction came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the people set him free. He set him as a master over his household, as a ruler over all his possessions, to instruct his princes according to his will. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Amen. We want to thank Miss Aria for leading us in the reading of the psalm for this morning. And Miss Aria is reading in Thanksgiving for four successful years of high school as she prepares for her graduation. We want to wish her congratulations on this achievement. Our second canticle for this morning is the canticle, The Song of Christ's Glory, based on Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 through to 11, and found on page 54 in our CPWI, Books of Common Prayer. Christ Jesus was in the form of God, but he did not cling to equality with God. He emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, and was born in the likeness of men. Being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our Bible reading for this morning comes from the book of Zechariah, chapter 14, verses 1 through to 14, and leading us in the reading in honor of the achievements of Miss Aria is Miss Haley Bailey. Let's have a listen. This morning's reading is taken from Zechariah, chapter 4, verses 1 through 14. The angel who talked with me came again and wakened me as one is wakened from sleep. He said to me, what do you see? And I said, I see a lampstand all of gold with a bowl on the top of it. There are seven lamps on it with seven lips on each of the lamps that are on the top of it. And by it, there are two olive trees, one on the right of the bowl and the other on its left. I said to the angel who talked with me, what are these, my Lord? Then the angel who talked with me answered me, do you not know what these are? I said, no, my Lord. He said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. What are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain, and he shall bring out the top stone amid shouts of grace, grace to you. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also complete it. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. For whoever has despised the day of small things shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel. These seven are the eyes of the Lord, which range through the whole earth. Then I said to him, what are these two olive trees on the right and the left of the lampstand? And the second time I said to him, 
What are these two branches of the olive trees which pour out the oil through the two golden pipes? He said to me, do you not know what these are? I said, no, my Lord. Then he said, these are the two anointed ones who stand by the Lord of the whole earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We want to thank Miss Haley and Miss Aria for leading us into readings for this morning. If you allow me a few seconds to get back to the beginning of the reading from Zechariah chapter 4, verses 1 through to 14. And let's see, let's see, let's see. There we go. <laughs> the book of Zechariah, of course, is also a book of prophecy. And the prophet, of course, is making his um, prophetic speeches at the, the time of the remain the return of the remaining um the remnant from the babylonian exile so yesterday when we looked at it we looked at the lord telling the people he's going to take them out of the land and he's going to put them in a new land we discussed yesterday the fact that those who remained in jerusalem after the the the, the nations were divided that those who remained thought that they do because they did not get taken away they were the lucky ones we spoke of the fact that those who went away into the exile were the ones that the lord was holding back in order to protect them even though they were in foreign countries to protect them that he could rebuild the nation when they come back and yesterday when we looked at the prophecy of isaiah we heard all about what the lord was planning to do and how he was reminding the people of what could be if they walk with him. And today, as opposed to Isaiah's prophecy of what was going to happen during the time before Zechariah comes on the scene, Zechariah, Zechariah is the son of, of um, Berechiah, who is going to be now making his prophetic Korea during the time of King Darius and King Darius of course was the ruler of the Medes and the Persians and he was one who even though he was not from the nation of Israel was used by God for the rebuilding of the nation yes and and Darius's career um or not Darius's now um Zechariah's career yes was one where there is no king over Israel or Judah, just King Darius, the ruler of the Persians and the Medes. And, and his prophecy is set at a time where the people need to hear from God because they do not have their own ruler. And even though God is using Darius to accomplish great things, King Darius was a good fellow. Even though um, he's going to use Darius to do big things, he still needs a direct line of communication to his people. And the timing of Zechariah's prophecy is believed by theologians to be set two months after Haggai's first prophecy. And within a month or so, um, you know, of this, this time. So like Haggai, Zechariah's message is one of encouragement for the people. Yes, um, he's aware that not all the return remnant are fully sincere in their desire to serve God. And so he is there, he is therefore counseling them to repent of their sin and to return to God with all their heart. And this prophecy that we hear in the Bible is more of a, a vision. Yes, and his vision is of an olive tree with lampstands. And of course, we know the lampstands are a reflection of the lampstands that are supposed to be in the temple. And these lampstands were fueled by olive oil. And the lampstands in the temple were supposed to be constantly burning. So it was the job of the particular priest who was responsible for this to ensure that the lampstands never ran out of oil. But in this particular vision that Zechariah is going to be having these golden lampstands that he will see yes um is is going to represent then the rebuilding of a temple one because their temple had been destroyed and a sense of the fact that god will be present again 
in the midst of his people in the temple. And in his vision, Zechariah sees an angel coming towards him, asking him what he sees. And he tells the angels, well, I see lampstands of gold with a bowl on top of each. Yes, and there are seven lamps on each lampstand with seven lips on each of the lamps that are on top of it. Yes, and the, the number seven believed here to be a blessed number. Yes, in scripture. But that's another sermon for, for another time. And he sees the seven lampstands and the seven pipes on the seven lampstands. And by the seven um, lips or pipes by the lampstands are two olive trees, one on the right of the bowl and one of the left, one on the left. And in the temple, there were no olive trees growing. So Zechariah saw something that was never there in the temple. But these two olive trees were, were meant to supply in the vision the seven lampstands with oil through the seven lips or the seven pipes. And what did it mean? It mean that this, or unlike, not despite, but unlike the fact that it was a tedious job of temple service to be in constant care of the lamps on the golden lampstand, they had to be continually filled with oil, clean of soot, the wick maintained, Zachariah is seeing a self-fulling, self-maintaining lamp that is fed directly from a source, the two olive trees. Yes? And what it is saying is that these lampstands, these light that burn in the temple of the Lord, yes, are not dependent upon human nature it is not dependent upon the activities of humans for the light of god to continue to shine remember the light on the lampstands in the temple were a representation of the presence of god in the temple which is why the lamps were never supposed to be out which is why they were supposed to be tediously cared for but in the vision that zachariah is having there is no need for humans to be maintaining the light the light is being maintained by a source that is outside of anything that human could bring. It is directly fed by the oil flowing out of an olive tree. And it's lucky for us that verse 4 and 5, in verse 4 and 5, Zechariah explains or asks for an explanation of the vision. So he answers the angels and tells the angel what, what he sees. But then he asks the angel after he tells him what he sees, Okay, what are these, my Lord? And the angel who was talking with him answers him, Do you not know what these are? And Zechariah makes no, he means no words, No, no, my Lord, I don't know. I mean, Zechariah saw the vision but didn't understand what it meant. What he saw was simple but unusual. Trees growing in the temple, a lampstand being supplied with oil directly through pipes coming out from two olive trees. That's not normal. And the angel kind of made sure that Zechariah knew that he must come to understand the meaning of this vision. Yeah? You, I don't know if, if you're like me. I seldom, I seldom dream. I am most of the time so tired that when the body shuts down, the body shuts down and it doesn't have. But when I do dream, I always try to, when I wake up, one, recall the parts of the dream and two, Ask God, okay, I dreamt this. What message are you trying to send me? Yes. And it's almost as if in this vision or dream that Zachariah has, it is necessary for him to understand why he's having it. And that's why the angel asked him, do you know what these are? And Zachariah could have pretended because a lot of the times <laughs> we as followers of Christ, in not wanting to look bad, we pretend that we understand what the Lord is saying. Sometimes we even make up an explanation. As opposed to trusting in God that he will provide for us the explanation to certain things. But the angel in this particular reading wanted to make sure that not only did Zechariah have the experience of the vision, but he needs to understand the meaning of the vision if he's going to take God's message successfully to God's people. And so in verse 6 and 7, we get the meaning of the vision. Yes? And he says, this is my word. This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. 
Yes? Now, Zerubbabel was the civic leader of Jerusalem. Remember, they had no king. And Zerubbabel had the responsibility to finish the work of the rebuilding of the temple that King Darius had already approved. Remember, this is the remnant coming out of the Babylonian exile, going back into their land. And the first thing that they are setting out to do is to rebuild the place of worship. Because they are thankful that God has delivered them out of this bondage in Babylon, bringing them back to their homeland and they need to rebuild. And the first order of the day is the rebuilding of the house of worship. And after King Darius is approached and he gives his permission he puts Zerubbabel as a leader responsible for the rebuilding of the temple. Now the work had stalled and Zerubbabel had begun to feel discouraged that work was not being carried out as quickly as he thought it was supposed to be. And Zerubbabel feeling discouraged had kind of sort of given up. And so this vision coming from Zechariah was to encourage Zerubbabel. It's not you. It's not the people you are working with. What you're doing is for the glory of God and I will sustain it. So like the lampstand in the vision, yes, it is not about what humans can do to maintain the light of Christ in the temple. I myself will be its source. The olive tree is representing God. And then one of the favorite Bible verses of people coming out of Zechariah 4 verse, um, verse 6. Where the angel says that this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. I mean, might focuses on a collective strength of a people, resources of a group. Power focuses on individual strength. And God was telling his people, this temple of mine is going to be rebuilt, not by the resources of many or by the resources of one. It will only come to pass through my grace and my spirit. It will not be dependent on human cleverness it will not be dependent on human ability it will not be dependent on human physical strength what is going to be accomplished is going to be accomplished by the spirit of god and that is exactly what the vision was showing a direct power from the source to sustain the things of god and zerubbabel had been promised by Darius fine lumber and precious stones and the people were supposed to be putting in the labor to accomplish this work. Yes? But what was necessary outside of all the physical attributes was for Zerubbabel and the people trying to rebuild to recognize that the only necessary resource for getting God's work completed was God's Holy Spirit. And it's interesting because we don't begin to hear about the Holy Spirit until New Testament writings and we're getting ready for Pentecost on Sunday. Yes? And we, we don't necessarily think of the Holy Spirit until we get to the New Testament. But the Holy Spirit is ever present. Because the Trinity, while never mentioned as the Trinity anywhere in the Bible, is an idea that is there from the beginning in Genesis. The Spirit of the Lord was roaming over the face of the earth and there was vastness and nothingness until the Word of God began to speak things into being. And while Holy Spirit is considered a New Testament construct, it is not absent. From the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Here you hear the Lord himself in verse 6. Talk about his spirit. His word to Zerubbabel and the people of Jerusalem is not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. The my spirit that the Lord of hosts is talking about is the one and the same Holy Spirit. It's the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. It's not a new construct that just 
pops up in the Old Testament. It is there all the time. And the truth is that just as Zerubbabel was becoming disappointed in many of our walks with Christ today, when we trust in our own resources, when we trust in our own ability, in our own cleverness, in our own physical strength to rebuild our lives or to try to do for the glory of the kingdom of God, we end up frustrating ourselves. When we trust in our own resources, whether they be small or great in the eyes of man, if a part of our trust is not fixed on the full supply of the Spirit of God, then we'll find ourselves in problems. The, 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 the motto for our Anglican high school in Belize City, Nisi Dominus Fustra, unless the Lord helps, they labor in vain. A lot of the times we try to accomplish on our own without consecrating what we are doing to the Lord without asking for his guidance as we try to accomplish it, frustrating ourselves. When what is needed is the same spirit that the Lord is telling Zerubbabel through Zechariah in the Old Testament. My spirit is what sustains the work. And it is the same spirit, the same breath of God, the Ruach of God which worked in creation in Genesis chapter 1, which worked at the Red Sea in Exodus 15 to open the, the, the sea and allow them to walk on, on dry ground. The same spirit which passed over and gave life to the dead bones in Ezekiel is the same spirit that here in Zechariah chapter 4, the Lord is talking about, is the same spirit that at the ascension, Jesus told to his disciples, wait because I'm going to send back something for you to be your advocate. The spirit of God is the same spirit that we are supposed to be dependent upon, that we could accomplish for the glory of God. Last week, when we were in, in Bible study, we spoke of the ascension and the promise of God's Spirit. And one of my questions that I asked in Bible study last week, because I, I, I held over, I was blessed to hold over for the bishop last week. My, my question was, but what is the place of the Holy Spirit for us in our Anglican identity? And I, I, I am constantly afraid that the Holy Spirit is only spoken about at baptism, at confirmation, and on Trinity Sunday and Pentecost. The truth is, the Holy Spirit is that which is the breath of God that sustains our life. That is supposed to motivate us and give us the strength and courage we need to do the things of God. And the truth is, nothing can be done successfully for God without God who dwells in us in the presence of his spirit. It's interesting because the Lord wanted Zerubbabel and Jerusalem to know that the Holy Spirit would constantly supply their needs as the olive tree in the vision continually supplied oil to the lamps on the lampstand. And God still wants us to know that his supply of the Spirit and our reliance on the Holy Spirit is to be continual. An interesting portion of reading. By my spirit, says the Lord, is sweet oil used in the vision as a good representation of the Holy Spirit. When oil is used, it, it lubricates for the purpose of a lack of friction. Yes? When our actions are lubricated by the presence of the oil of the Holy Spirit, there is little friction and wear among and between us. Oil is symbolic of, of healing as a medicinal treatment in biblical times. And the Spirit of God brings healing and restoration for his people. 
Oil is used as a source for creating light when it's burned in a lamp. And where the Spirit of God is, there is going to be light that cannot be hid. Oil is used to invigorate through the use of massages and the Holy Spirit, when we have it, invigorates us for the service of Christ. Oil is used to, to be applied as an adornment, as a, as a perfume, and the presence of the sweet Holy Spirit of God adorns us and makes us more pleasant to be around when we are living in the Holy Spirit. I mean, when you think of all the goodness that oil can do, and the Lord uses oil as a representation of his spirit. Wow. Can you imagine if our lives were soothed over, covered in, and saturated with the presence of the oil of the Spirit of God. Wow. How beautiful it would be. A fitting, a fitting, most fitting vision from Zechariah. And it reminds me that the word of God is, is timeless. Because as the Lord was calling Jerusalem to remember that he is the source that would supply the oil for all they could need to encourage them to not be disappointed or to, be, to not be self-reliant, but to trust in him. It's the same message that we need in our day and our time. Trust in God. Allow the oil of his spirit to wash over and dwell in you. Do not rely on might. Do not rely on power. But rely upon the spirit of the Lord of hosts. And watch. Watch as the oil of the spirit makes parts in our lives. Amen. And all I could think is, anoint me, Lord, with the oil of your spirit. <laughs> Let us continue then with the profession of our faith. In the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. <coughs> he suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. As our Savior has taught us, so let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. For our suffrages this morning, we will use suffrage C on page 44. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. 
in you lord is our hope and we shall never hope in vain our first collect for today is the collect for the seventh sunday of easter let us pray O god the king of glory you have exalted your only son jesus christ with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven do not leave us comfortless but send us your holy spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Saviour Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Together we say a call it for peace. Eternal God, in whose perfect kingdom no sword is drawn but the sword of righteousness, no strength known but the strength of love. So mightily spread abroad your spirit that all peoples may be gathered under the banner of the Prince of Peace as children of one Father, to whom be dominion and glory, now and for ever. Amen. At this time, we turn to our prayers of personal intercessions and thanksgiving. This morning, we want to extend birthday greetings to the following individuals. Celebrating a birthday today is Miss Patricia Juarez, Miss Yvette Haylock, Miss Deborah Buck, Mr. Dwight Usher, and Miss Elisha Marie Arzu. We pray, ladies and gentlemen, that you will have a blessed and beautiful birthday, and that indeed God's blessings continue to be upon you, not just for today, but for all the remaining days ahead. Happy birthday! We continue to give Almighty God thanks for persons who have recovered from illness and surgery and we continue to pray for healing and recovery for the following individuals. We remember and pray for Miss Judith, Miss Ines, Miss Pauline, Miss Rose, Miss Grace, Miss Celine, Miss Maria, Miss Norma, Miss Mary, Miss Marilyn, Miss Verolyn and Miss Abelina. We pray for Miss Monica, Miss Eileen, Miss Des, Miss Aislin, Miss Justine, Miss Lisa, Miss Soyla, Miss Beryl, Miss Janet, Miss Nina, Miss Elena, and Miss Louise. We pray for Miss Margaret, Miss Sylvia, Miss Janice, Miss Dylan, Miss Alma, Miss Leslie, Miss Crystal, Miss Amelia, Miss Venancia, Miss Ilona, Miss Fiona, and Miss Catherine. We pray for Miss Betty, Miss Rita, Miss Marva, Miss Gloria, Miss Celestina, Miss Jessica, Miss LaShawn, Miss Altia, Miss Teresa, Miss Laverne, Miss Caroline, Michelle Madin, Miss Agnes, Miss Marta, Miss Loretta, Miss Barbara, Miss Ruby, Miss Arlette, Miss Yolanda, Miss Janice, Miss Glenda, Miss Joyce, Miss Sheila, and Miss Gretel. We pray for Miss Esme, Miss Helen, Miss Alma, Miss Maud, Miss Elma, Miss Delverine, Miss Geraldine, Miss Myrtle, Miss Kim, Miss Dominique, and Miss Pat. We pray for Miss Laverne, Miss Mona, Miss Derla, Miss Molly, Miss Amy, Miss Jean, Miss Gladys, Miss Cecilia, Miss Ismay, and Miss Elva. In our prayers, we continue to pray for the following of our brothers. We remember and pray for Mr. Zane, Mr. Larry, Mr. Kenrick. Mr. Wilfred, Mr. Marvin, Mr. Philip, Father Eric, and Mr. Jeffrey. We pray for Mr. Rudolph, Mr. Finley, Mr. Costa, Mr. Oscar, Mr. Freddy, Mr. Dion, Mr. Charles, and Mr. Edmundo. We remember and pray for Mr. Dudley, Mr. Rupert, Mr. Enrique, Mr. Robert, Mr. Rodney, Mr. Ismael, Father Jerris, and Father Constancio. We pray for Mr. Leroy Jr., Mr. Dion, Mr. Alfred, Mr. Ian, Mr. Michael Griffith, Mr. Michael Samuels, Mr. Michael Soberanis, and Mr. Basso. We pray for Mr. Wilmot, Mr. Russell, Mr. Kurt, Mr. Gilbert, Mr. Lyndon, Mr. Mark, Mr. Emmett, Mr. Tony, 
and Mr. Ian. In our prayers, we continue to pray for and remember those persons who are grieving the loss of a loved one. We remember and pray for the family of Miss Doreen Belisle, for the family of Miss Daphne Longsworth Kemp, for the family of Mr. Graham Sampson, the family of Mr. Marlon Rodriguez, the family of Father Hardy Garden, and the family of Mr. Eliseo Rosado. We continue to pray for God's comfort and peace to be upon all those who are grieving the loss of a loved one, and we pray for eternal rest for those who have died. We continue to remember and pray for protection over our loved ones who are far away from us. We continue to remember and pray for our students, praying for Tammy, Ashley, Anwa, Brittany, Karina, Ria, Kai, Courtney, Elton, Akua, and Arian. We pray for our loved ones in the military. We remember and pray for Emil, Jason, Jade, Charles, Gavin, Barry, Kishan, Sam, and Alvin. We continue to pray for the protection and the enablement of all medical professionals in the performance of their duties. We remember and pray for Drs. Molina, Manzanero, Shogreen, Arana, Eck, Lawrence, Joseph, Sosa, Cuellar, and Beard. We remember and pray for our nurses, praying for Nurse McKean, Nurse Gill, Nurse Herrera, Nurse Aurel, Nurse Cherie, Nurse Joycelyn, Nurse Alberta, Nurse Aaron, Nurse Alejandra, Nurse Olivia, Nurse Julie, and Nurse Ashley. We remember and pray for all personnel that work in our various medical systems and institutions, both private and public. We continue to remember and pray for persons who are infected with COVID-19, those in the various forms of isolation, by the, in institutions or at home. We continue to pray for the ready availability of a cure or a vaccine. We pray for this new rollout program for the vaccination of children below the age of 12. We continue to pray for the containment and eventual elimination of this COVID-19. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for the combating of the economic fallout caused by this pandemic. We pray for persons who are struggling to make ends meet, persons who would have lost employment, persons whose salaries would have been reduced. We continue to remember the most vulnerable in our society, the poor, the needy, the elderly, those with pre-existing health conditions and those who have none to care for them. We continue to remember and pray for our security forces, for the government, for the churches, the private sector, all non-governmental organizations involved in the fight against COVID-19 or in any form of humanitarian aid. We continue to remember and pray for the international community most severely affected by this pandemic, by the ravages of war, by the ravages of gun violence, by the ravages of gang violence, by the ravages of natural disaster. We continue to remember and pray for protection for ourselves and our region as we now are in the hurricane season. We pray for God's protection over us and we remember and pray for persons who are on the road to recovery following any of these types of disasters. In our prayers as we continue to prepare for our synod this weekend, we continue to pray for God's presence over this decision-making body of his church. We pray together, Almighty and everlasting Father, you have given the Holy Spirit to abide with us forever. Bless, we pray, with its grace and presence, the bishop and other clergy and laity soon to be assembled in your name, that your church, being preserved in true faith and godly discipline, may fulfill all the mind of him who loves it and gives him life for himself for it your Son, Jesus Christ, our Saviour, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. For the prayers of our hearts that our tongues cannot confess, we pray that Almighty God would hear our prayers. We conclude our intercessions by praying together, Almighty and Eternal God, Sanctify and govern our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and the works of your commandments, that under your protection now and ever we may be preserved in body and soul, through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Amen. By means of announcement, brothers and sisters, I want to thank you so much for joining me for morning prayer this morning. It is indeed a blessing and a privilege to be able to greet each new day in the presence of Almighty God and in your presence as well. I do hope you are having a blessed and beautiful morning thus far and that indeed you will have a blessed and beautiful day. I want to remind you of our broadcast schedule for today. Following this broadcast, we have noonday prayers at midday. We have evening prayer at 5.30. At 7.30 via Zoom, we have um, Bible study. And our topic for Bible study today is a continuation of the look at the Holy Spirit. It is renewed in the Lord, empowered by the Spirit. And our text for Bible study this evening is Roman 12, chapter, Roman chapter 12, verse 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is the will of God and what is good and acceptable and perfect. So we join with the bishop at 7.30 to be led in Bible study by him. And of course, on the Anglican Diocese of Belize, on the St. John's, on the um, Christ the King and all the other Facebook pages, the link for the Zoom meeting will be there. What I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to copy this and paste it in the messages right now for us here in Facebook that you could save the link. Yes, that you could join us for Bible study this evening. I hope that worked just now. I'm trying to do two things at the same time here. But yes, do join us for Bible study at 7.30 and Bible study ends just with enough time for us to then go into Compline at 9 p.m in order to close off the day. I do invite you to join us for any or all of these broadcasts and activities as you are able. And even if you can't, we are still thankful for your prayerful support of the work and the ministry of the Anglican Diocese of Belize. We're going to wrap things up this morning with our prayer of dedication, followed by the grace, the dismissal, and then our final hymn. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and to serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. I do pray you have a blessed and beautiful day today, no matter what the day might bring ahead. Know that you have a continual source that will not run dry if you have the Spirit of Almighty God. We're going to close off with one this morning that quickly became one of my favorites earlier on. This one is called As I Went Down to the river to pray. I do pray you have a blessed and beautiful day. Please do all you can to keep yourself and your family safe. Until tomorrow morning, same place, same time. God bless and bye for now. As I went down to the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and you shall wear the starry crown, good Lord, show us the way. Oh, sisters, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, sisters, let's go down, down to the river to pray. As I went down to the river to pray, studying about the good old way, and you shall wear the robe and crown. Good Lord, show us the way. Oh, brothers, let's go.
never to pray Study it about that good old way And you shall wear the starry crown Good Lord, show us the way To the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and you shall wear the robe and crown. Good Lord, show us the way. Oh, mothers, let's go down, let's go down. Don't you want to go down? Oh, mothers, let's go down, down to the river to pray. Down, down to the river to pray.